All right. Hey, hey, hey. It's so good to see so many of your faces here. Oh, it's telling me it's being recorded. Okay, continue. Oh, so fun. Thank you for hopping on here on Monday night. I feel like um, it's been a little bit since we've been on here. Last week was amazing with Tracy, and I feel like I could watch that Zoom over and over and over again. She totally had our heartbeat of our team. So if you did not watch last week's training, make sure you catch that because it's so the heartbeat of our team and what everything flows out of. And she gave really, really practical tips that we can take. If you saw the birthday message things on Momentum Makers, all of that is there. So grab a hold of that this month. We are in in May. Who is excited about May? Just to like throw it in the comments, wave, Donna, I see you. Okay, we are so excited. So excited for May. The promos are ridiculously good. Sweet girl, I love it. So, so good. First of all, Active is like one of my absolute favorites. Um, I like all of the flavors. I like to mix and match in my pink drink with hydrate, without hydrate. I like to drink them alone and then together. It just gives you like new bursts of flavors all the time. But when your new VIPs enroll this month, they're getting a free bag of star fruit guava active. So I'm super excited about that. I think it just amps up Slim Active Ease uh, welcome pack specifically because it only comes with one who has 15 packets. People are like, why does it only come with 15 packets? Well, boom, it's 30 this month. Yay. So that's one that I'll be going hard after this month and promoting that specific welcome pack, but get creative and let people know that they're getting a gift, a free gift. They already get the water bottle and now they get a bag of star fruit guava as well. And then I literally fresh hot off the press read about these building bonuses that we get. As soon as you enroll two new VIPs, your bonuses double. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. So if your welcome pack bonus is usually $20, it's going to be 40 after you've enrolled two people. Or if you have the bigger welcome packs, your welcome pack bonus is going to be even more. So focus on helping new friends get started because your welcome pack bonuses are going to be bigger. This is like, I just can't believe it. I'm like, why does Plexus just keep making things better and better and sweeter and sweeter? And it should have put a light bulb in your head that said, hey, the potential to start brand new is even better this month. Okay, so this is even better. The first time someone tells you, I can't afford the products right now, great. Let's sign you up as a VIP customer, get you your referral code so you can make the building bonuses and pay for your welcome pack. Okay, so it's a perfect way to help people get started. Don't forget about the Y Plexus, why now? Sorry for the confusing startup that we had to do it on Wednesday. We did it at 8.30 the first time, but the consistent day and time will be Thursday at 9 p.m. unless something came up, but most likely from now on, it will be Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, okay? So I think I put like five to six graphics in both the Rise Up, Rank Up, and in team pages, we'll throw them on Momentum Makers if you need them as well. But you have lots of different graphic options. But remember, the success of these events are going to be relationally based. So the more you personally invite people to these events, the better turnout you're going to have. The more you explain what these events are for to the people who come and then to people who are your new VIPs, the better these events will be. So the goal is that this is a tool for you to help your new VIPs be able to go silver quickly and easily without them feeling like they have to do anything. They don't have to make a post. They don't have to know anything. They simply have to get somebody on a page to listen to a live where I explain my story, explain some products, explain fast start, okay? Short and easy. And then we invite them to take part and invite potentials the next week, okay? So Krista is going to do this Thursday at 9 p.m. It's going to be amazing. And we always try to keep them about 10 minutes. So it's not super long. And if they can't be there for those 10 minutes, 
they have 48 hours to watch and then it disappears. So make sure you're using those events to your advantage and to your team's advantage because the goal is momentum and we're in May and we're all about May momentum. And really quickly before I pass it on, I was just praying over our Zooms as we always do, just asking the Lord what he might want to speak today. And I just heard him say, are you all the way in the pool, like in the deep end? Are you swimming or are you not? Okay. And I was like, cool. I'm in the pool. I'm in the deep end. But what I see for our team is there are some people who are just sitting by the pool and they might get splashed. Maybe they're going to add a VIP. Maybe they're not. They're kind of playing the game. They're going to see if something sticks, but they really don't even know what the water is all about. Is it hot? Is it cold? They're not sure. Then there are other people who are like sitting by the pool and their feet are in. So they're kind of getting their feet wet, but they're not really sure whether they want to go all in or not. And then there's other of you who are like, dive, you're diving in, you know what the water's like and you're ready to swim or you're already swimming and you feel the waves, you feel the momentum and you're gonna dive in. But here's the thing that I felt like the Lord wanted to highlight. You can't make other people swim. They have to swim for themselves, but you can teach them. One thing I know when I'm at the pool with my kids and something I realized is I took two kids to swim lessons and what happened to my third? She taught herself. How did she teach herself? By watching my older two swim like they should be swimming and then Lydia caught on and was able to swim on her own and wanted to do what she was doing. So as a leader, you have to be moving yourself. You have to be working and exercising yourself and doing things in order to produce results in your business, okay? And you can't teach others to swim unless you can swim yourself. So make sure you're doing the things. Know that like if you push someone into the pool or you're just waiting for somebody to dive in, it's not going to happen. You have to do it first and then people will join you or you'll be able to teach them because you yourself know how to do it. You're building your endurance and your heart muscles. Your muscles are strengthening and you're able to do it easier. You're learning lessons that then can help them swim better and be able to wade and ride those waves as they come. Because I promise you, network marketing is all about waves. There are gonna be times where you are riding the wave up. There are gonna be times where the wave is coming down and you have to be able to know, decipher this season, hang on and swim well through the tide. So hopefully that stuck with you. I feel like that was for somebody, the Lord was speaking it, but I have the privilege and the honor of introducing someone who really has ridden the tide well. Y'all, this girl has been through seasons in this network marketing business. She ran hard. She tried three times to start the supplements. And you know, the third time is the charm. She gave it all she had. Then she started feeling better and she caught the vision and she ran. She ran all the way to Ruby right before she had her sweet baby girl. And then season started to shift for her. She had a newborn, she moved, she watched her team kind of dwindle a little bit. And she has come back with a passion and a fire like I've never seen before. She added four new VIPs last month and she re-ranked senior gold growing her team by 114 points last month. So that is incredible. She's re-ranked senior gold. She's got Ruby on her eyes again. And the best part about it is seeing her heart for her team. And she could not go to sleep without watching her team hit the goals that they had set for last month into the midnight hour. So Xandra Wingfield, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you. But if you guys will just like crazy clap in the chat for her and tell her how amazing she is, I would love that. Morgan, I love you. Thanks girl. Um, yeah, last month honestly was like I've had a really crazy months in the past with Plexus, but I was telling Morgan and I told my team that our my points weren't even the highest last month, but it was my favorite and the best month that I've ever had in Plexus because I got to watch 
things that I've prayed for to the Lord. Um, I've got to watch how he's really refined and taught me lessons. Uh, I got to watch my team start to grow in the Lord. And we got to have all these conversations about how this, this isn't just a business. This is, this is really a faith walk, honestly. And that's something that as, you know, as you go through, as all of us have gone through our journey in Plexus, we've learned that it's about staying steady. It's about, but it's really about where the Lord wants to do in our hearts and inside of us. And I didn't truly understand that when I first started Plexus. Like you hear that, you're like, okay, this is cool. But over the years of, it's been two years now and seeing how the Lord really has, he's done it time and time again, but what he wants to do in the inside of us, what he wants to do for our families and for our friends, and then now getting to see my team experience it, that's what made last month the best. So, um, you know, I've had team members that I've prayed for and the Lord is, brought them in so organically and so beautifully. And I remember even talking to Morgan about, you know, her ebbs and flows and her seasons. And and when she finally hit ranks that she wanted or, you know, dreams that she felt like the Lord had put on her heart. And then she find it finally came to pass. She said, we hit it as a healthy team. And I finally feel like we're in a place where we're moving forward as a healthy team. And that's like, I mean, that makes my heart really swell because it's there's such a piece about that. It didn't feel like striving last month. Um, and we got to have the conversations about watch God come through at the midnight hour. And I had seen that happen on, on Morgan's team and teams above us and even in my own journey. But to watch that happen for my team, that was really special. So, uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I didn't think I was going to be sharing about my journey tonight. I thought I was going to be introducing <laughs> the person who I'm introducing next, but I'm really honored because it is such a team effort and it's just come to a place of total peace in the Lord. And when you just release and give it to the Lord, watching him do it and getting to pray with my team last month and, and be like, God, please like come through for them. And, and, and then seeing him do it, like our jaws were dropping and, and watching him come through in the most unexpected ways and getting to cheer them on and, and saying, but what did God say? I think that that was a highlight of last month too, is getting to share with my team that lesson that I've had to learn. And then I'm still learning and very much walking through, but you know, in, in the beginning of the month, knowing, okay, this is the goal that God put in front of me, or this is what God is speaking. And where am I at now? And then through that whole faith journey, continuing to come back to, but what did God say? Morgan's always been so, so good about, you know, bringing me back to that place. And so getting to, again, go back to my team and be like, this is what I've learned. And this is what they've really like drilled in deep down in me. And, and even being transparent with my team and being like, I'm having deja vu because I feel like these are the same exact things that my, that my leaders, Morgan and Krista were able to pour into me. So it's so special. It really is. And when you come to like, no, you're not always going to see the super high highs and you're not always going to see your points skyrocket. But when you get to that place of surrendering and being like, God, I'm here for the whole journey. Uh, that's where I was at last month of I'm here for the journey and getting to watch the steps fall into place for the journey. That's what has made this so worth it. So with all that being said, I did have somebody on my team who I've prayed for, for my whole plexus journey, really. And she has literally one of the most pure hearts, one of the most humble hearts that I know. I got to watch her from start to finish, overcome doubt, overcome fear, and time and time again, intentionally seek the Lord for her, for her own team, for what God wants to do with her business, with her ministry, because I truly believe this is a ministry. And time and time again, say, I'm listening to the Lord today. I'm hearing him. And, uh, you know, and then going back to, but what did God say in the beginning of the month? And keep coming back to that and watching her overcome those obstacles all the way down to the very last hour of the month, which we could not, we literally could not sleep after midnight because we were like, <laughs> I was like, okay, get some rest, girl. You deserve it. She was like, I'm not going to be able to sleep after what God just did. And then the next morning we were both like, look what God just did. So with, without further ado, that's how you say that. <laughs> without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, my friend. She ranked gold last month. Um, she had uh, over a 75 point increase. She added 13 new friends and worked hard from the time that she, she came running out the gate from the beginning of the month to the end and all did it all for the glory of God. That's her whole heart. So Taylor Cawthron, would you kindly share your heart with us where I'm so excited to hear you share. 
Wow, Sandra, Morgan, Krista, all of that was amazing. And uh, it was so cool watching God just blow us away this past month. And um, Isaac and I are on a date right now. So that's why you can't see us super well. But I guess the main thing is that you can hear us. <laughs> so that's what matters. Um, I... Uh, so I guess kind of going back a little bit before April um, to the month of March, our daughter Haven was born in the middle of March. And so during that time, I was intentionally not like going full force with sharing about Plexus, like on social media um, specifically, and um, just kind of like, I don't know, just having a rest month. I intentionally uh, did that. And, um, and so for the month of March, I, I didn't add any uh, new VIPs or customers. Um, but I, I was resting in God. I was content with that. And, and kind of like what Morgan said, like the waves come, but then you're in like the low tide and then the high tide starts coming and then you start paddling and you catch the wave and then you stand up and you surf it. Um, and so I feel like that's kind of what April was. And so in the beginning of April, we were talking up about goals. I was praying about goals. Um, Zandra and I, we were just going back and forth and I feel like God really gave me a new wind. He gave us just like a, a fresh wind to, to just go for it. And he really put on my heart to, to go for gold. And so, because I believe that that's something that God wanted me to run for, I said, okay, let God God, this is something that you want me to do. And I trust that you will bring it to completion. You will do this. So, so let's just go. And, um, with the, with Sandra's mentorship and following Jesus and Isaac's encouragement and just the whole team, honestly, like we, uh, I couldn't have done it without encouragement. And that's something that I really needed this past month. And God, God definitely used it, um, and, and so, yeah, so he put it on my heart to go gold. I was running for that. And, and so like by the 14th of the month, I think I had added eight people and that was because I had used, um, the ease challenge. I, what I did was as I was posting stories and posts on Facebook specifically, I would look and I would see who had looked at all of my stories. And at that last story that I had posted, I was like, okay, so who saw this, who, has who looked at the last stories that I posted I'm going to reach out to them because it looks like they're interested and so I would do that and and then whoever like liked my posts I would normally if I hadn't talked with them about plexus I would reach out to start a conversation ease it in just bring it up and and so that's how I got some of my people for the first half of the month and then others it was just like conversations um but so when, when April started, I actually only had two people with a subscription on. So I had 12 points that I could count on for the month of April. And I was like, God, this has to be you if I'm going to get to a hundred points. And, um, so I put sticky notes on the wall in my living room, um, on just one of the doors, like going by like sometimes by five or 10 from like five to a hundred. And that was really cool so that I could look at the sticky notes and pray for the people pray like what God had put on my heart for that month. Whenever I saw it, it helped for my husband, Isaac to know where I was at for so that he could encourage me or come up with new ideas and people who came to our house, they asked about it too. And that was pretty cool. Um, and, and so, uh, what else? Um, then yeah. So starting like the third week of April, it was very dry. It, the enemy was attacking our family really hard, specifically like till last week during the middle of the month till like last week. And, um, and it was like really hard with our marriage, with the like discouragement with plexus with just like different things going on. And, and I was ready to just stop for that month to just put a hot and be like, okay, if God wants me to get to gold, then like, then he'll do it. Right. <laughs> um, and so I was ready to like stop posting about it or sharing about it because I was just in a really low, low. And, and then uh, God used people like Zandra is one of them, one of like the biggest people during that time when I shared with her and she just spoke truth to me. And I was reminded like, wow, like this, 
is totally the enemy. This is not what God told me. And I'm believing the lies of the enemy and, um, and like, just rebuked that and spoke truth and and Isaac really encouraged me too and then and then we started going even more full force than the first half of the month like we just we went because I knew like I I was filled up with truth I was not believing the lies and and so there was nothing that could stop me because the enemy has no hold on me and and so as I started to go um I I don't even remember what happened like that until the last day, basically, like God just kept bringing us. And, and then we get to the last day of April. And I think I was at, I still had over 20 points to go. And so we were road tripping on the 30th. And so we just started like calling people and texting people and God showed us like who to talk to. And, and uh, he had people reply and be like, Oh yeah, I'm so glad that you just texted about this. Like what other products do you have? Let me see. And, and so we got several orders on the six hour drive, which was really cool. Like we did it together. It wasn't just me. We're doing it as a team because I don't want to do anything as just me because I'm not an individual anymore, but we're a team, like we're one. And so if Isaac isn't in it, if God isn't in it, then I don't, Lord willing, like I don't want to be in it. And, and so it was really cool to see us just finish hard that last day together. And Isaac just really encouraging me, Zandra, like, I I feel like we talk all the time because she's just always encouraging me and pushing me and speaking truth to me. Um, And then, so yeah, we get to that evening and I literally needed one more order. And, and Isaac had told me in the car when we needed that one more order, he said, okay, I think that this last order will be really hard to get. And, and I was like, okay, like, that's cool. I don't think it'll be hard. <laughs> like we're this close. And, and I wasn't worried at all, but then it got like past dinner time and I still had that one order. And I was like, okay, what's going to happen? Like, I don't know who else to reach out to. What else am I going to do? And, uh, but I still, like, I wasn't worried. I wasn't anxious, but I was starting to get like, what's he going to do? There's like, there's a countdown now. Um, and, and little, little did I know that like other people were praying for me and I had no idea like how much work Sandra and some other people were doing to help me get to uh, that 100 plus points and it's just so amazing like god is so amazing and i'm in awe of him but okay so that evening um someone had reached out to me they were in the middle of ordering and then they said oh i'm actually not gonna order right now and then i'm like what like jaw drop there's like two and a half more hours god what are you doing (laughs) and then i continued to wait and i was praying and i normally go to bed at like 8 30 or i'm in bed like i'm not a night person but it's after 11 o'clock and i'm wide awake like okay this is gonna happen right god like you will bring this completion like you told me and and then a little bit after 11 o'clock like well a little bit before 11 30 someone messaged me who I had reached out to several weeks ago I tried to just be reaching out to at least someone every day and so this girl had seen my message hadn't replied but she replied right then a little bit before 11 30 and she said I really want to order I've seen all of your posts and I want to do it and so I replied right away I was like okay let's let's do this and I was texting with her as she was ordering and and then she ordered a little bit before midnight and it was so amazing to see what God did he literally like it he showed me that it was all him and that's what I had been praying earlier that month like God I want to see how it's you and and how it's not me doing this because I can't do this on my own I will be so tired and so drained and I won't know what to do um, because I've had months before where I was just pressing into God and and what he had for me and it was so like I wasn't stressed at all it just came so naturally it was so easy it was like yeah like God's gonna do this and um and that's how this past month felt as well and I pray that that would just continue. Um, and, and then like my faith has grown since starting Plexus. And when I first started to take the products before I started sharing, like I did not think that was one of the 
the perks of Fluxus, like growing in my faith. I had no idea. I thought it was just a health supplement. So that's really cool. And I love this team. Thank you all so much for your encouragement. And, and I can see God's hand in this team um, as uh, we follow him. Uh, and, I, and I just, yeah, I pray that we would follow him with immediate obedience so we wouldn't be striving on our own strength because relying on Jesus is so much better. It's so much more rewarding. And, um, and why, like, why are we here to give God glory, right? So let's give him glory through everything, including sharing with people and our goals, um, and everything. Um, and then one last thing that I just want to leave you guys with is that earlier today, actually on our way on the way to our date, Isaac was talking to me and we were talking about like tonight and how I would be sharing. And he just reminded me that, um, something that we've heard recently is that God should be first our, our family, our well, like marriage and, and then kids. So like family is second. And then like this business side of Plexus is uh, an abundant blessing from God. And, and so I'm still finding a balance between like, like ultimately like loving God, but a balance between like family, loving my children and training them up and discipling them in the way of the Lord and loving my husband and, um, and doing what he's taught us to do alongside of Plexus because Plexus I know is, should not be above those first two things, um, the business side of Plexus. And, um, and so I'm just learning a balance between that and what that looks like. Um, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but that was just on my heart to share. And, uh, um, I hope that this story is encouraging to you and I'm so thankful for you guys. And so now uh, back to Krista. Uh, how do I even like share after this? I just told Chad, I'm like, I'm so nervous. I just want to sit and listen to the team. Like that would be my dream zoom just to never talk and listen. Taylor, that was amazing. Y'all was that not just so good. And a couple of things that stuck out to me is, did you see how she saw it through all the way till the end so often we can like hit that roadblock, just like she hit. That is so common that you come out the gate running and you hit hardship and it can knock you out. And it makes me think of like, when you step out of the boat to walk on water, you're like, I'm ready, Lord. I want to walk on water. I'm going to come meet you. And, and you get out there and then you're like, oh, wow, these waves, <laughs> like, you know, but what's your perspective on the wave? What's, what's that surfer girl that like lost an arm, Bethany or Brittany? It's a B word, Bethany Hamilton. When she sees a wave, she's fired up. When she sees a wave, she rides the wave. If I see a wave, I'm like, mama, help me. But she doesn't. She sees it as opportunity. <laughs> it's like, shoot. <laughs> it's like, shoot. <laughs> I can't watch other people when I'm talking. I realize what a dork I am. Okay. But no, for real, when most of us see, shoot, now I see Sandra. When most of us see a wave, we oh. <laughs> turn off her camera. <laughs> okay, okay, it was a really good point, I'm sure. But most of us, we don't like get excited when we see waves, but surfers, they look for the best ones. Like some travel across the world to look for the biggest waves they can find. And I still remember my first trip to Hawaii looking out over the ocean and I could see the waves from above. And it so ministered to my heart, God's perspective on our waves that hit us in life. Because from up above, there were these beautiful white markings all throughout the ocean. It was all flat. Like you couldn't tell what was a big wave or a little wave or really anything. There could have been a full-blown storm down beneath me for all I know. But heavenly perspective shifts everything. And so often a trial hits us. And the first thing we need to make sure we do is put on the right lens for the wave that's coming against us. And the best viewpoint is going to be from the Lord's as to what he sees. He fully sees, is this an attack? Does this mean pause? Does it mean rest? Does it mean push through and persevere? Get his perspective. Don't let it just knock you out and be like, eh, I'll try next month. All right. Okay. How do I transition? I'm like so sweaty right now and embarrassed. Okay. And shaking, visibly shaking. In case y'all think I'm lying that I get nervous on these, I'll show you over and over that nervous, scared people can do this business. <laughs> 
um, and can figure out how to screen share. Well, while I do that, Chatty, do you know how to screen share? Quick plug on this book. If you haven't purchased this book yet, The Power of Five by John Maxwell, or if you're not reading a book this month, I highly encourage you to do so. I was thinking about like, if you don't know how to get where you want to go, you've got to grow. And, you know, I feel like you found it. Thanks. It's like right in the middle and really big. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so much is knowing like what you have your hands on. I know one gift I already had when I joined Plexus is I did understand network marketing. I knew it was a good thing. I had seen the vision of what it could do for people's lives. But if you don't have that established, grab books like this and, um, and learn and really make sure you're built on a firm foundation of the opportunity that you have. Beyond that, though, a lot of this is self-awareness. It's saying, hey, what do I need to work on? Figure that out, grab the book, buy the book, read the book, listen to the podcast, listen to the trainings and keep growing. So quick plug for this book that many of us are reading right now. I'm going to share my screen. Who knows what you're going to see before I find what we really have to see, but that's okay. It's going to be good. One second. Can you see it? Okay, hopefully you see a mountain. Put it in the chat. Do y'all know where this is? I was born and raised in Northern California, but when I was 16, we moved to Washington. My dad took a job there. My parents still live there. In fact, their home sits up on a hilltop. You can kind of see the homes in the distance. They sit up on a hilltop. That could even be where the area they live in. They can see the valley. Um, and they can see Mount Rainier from their port and they love it very much. Um, but I remember when we moved there, one of the first things we did was we purchased these books on all the hikes that you could do up Mount Rainier because you couldn't Google it back then. That, that wasn't such a thing. So you actually like went to bookstores and you bought books, you know? So we bought a book showing us all the places that we needed to hike to these waterfalls and these beautiful lookouts. And we bought hiking boots, the ugliest clunking things, but we got hiking boots and all the gear. And we were ready as many weekends as we could. If it wasn't raining, we were bound and determined to explore Mount Rainier. But this picture speaks volumes to me. It's something I think of often. And this actual picture right here is what I use for jewel training. So I'm bringing you a little bit of jewel training um, tonight. I know several of us have used this picture even in some of our coaching calls too. So for some of you, this is old hat. We've already talked through this. But here's what I know, both from this view right here, but also from life, life with sweet Judah and a special needs journey, life from navigating trials. Life is not sustainable on the mountaintop. The wonder is in the journey and the fruit is in the valley. I'm gonna say them again in case you're taking notes. Number one, life is not sustainable on the mountaintop. Number two, the wonders in the journey. And number three, the fruit is in the valley. Let's break that down. Look at the mountaintop. Do you see any houses up there? None. <laughs> now, if we were driving to the top of the mountain, we could get as far as Paradise Inn is what I think it's called. There's a resort at the quote unquote top. It's where it's the top for people like me. There's the hardcore. <laughs> Stop giggling. There's the hardcore hikers that like really know what they're doing and they like being cold in the snow, I guess. And they go to the top. I think they're crazy, but they like truly hike that top part that's just snow. Um, but the rest of us, we get to where Paradise Inn is, and that's the end of the road. And you can like have a meal, you can have a throw, you can like throw a snowball, try to breathe because you're in really high elevation. You can celebrate how far you've come, right? You can look back and be like, wow, like look how far we made it. What an amazing day. What, <laughs> what a great journey. But inevitably, what do you have to do? You've got to come back down. Life is not sustainable on the mountaintop. Even so Taylor, Taylor hit gold. She had this mountaintop moment right before midnight. So bless her heart. She had only a few minutes of seeing the loveliness of her points. And then what happens? You guys know this to be true. The next moment, especially if you stay up till midnight, you're like, oh, there it all went. <laughs> There's the zero. <laughs> like it's right back down. <laughs> Sandra, stop giggling. It's right back down the mountain that you go, right? I remember hitting Emerald and it was like this highlight moment. We had 24 hours to enjoy it because we had hit it the 30th, right? And so we got to see that for a whole day and then it was gone. 
it was that reminder back into the trenches. You cannot stay there. It's not healthy to stay there. It will lead to just like this, look at me, entitlement, pride, ego, and forgetting what got you there. You've got, you can like celebrate, you can do the things, stay humble, right? Look back and be grateful, but inevitably you gotta get back down the mountain. Number two, the journey, it's filled with wonder. Those hikes that we would take were filled with so much wonder. So many spots to look out and take in the view. So many beautiful waterfalls. In fact, this guy, I think one of your first times when we first met, because he was a Minnesota boy, I took him on one of the hikes to a waterfall. I still remember it. Aw, shucks. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm really just feeling all over the place. Let me go back to my notes because I'm so nervous with my husband next to me. You are, I wrote this down, you're capable of more than you um, ever think or more than you expected. It's the journey that makes our goals worth their weight in gold. We love hitting these ranks. It feels good to hit a goal Of course, it means an income for your family and down the road, it means a car stipend and trips and, you know, an income that can bring a spouse home full time. It can bring you home full time. Like there's so much that is to this, but inevitably it's always the journey that makes that worth its weight, right? I think we have a child screaming. We do. Um, Can you guys hear her? very dramatic, but I think we're fine. Sorry. (laughs) Anyways, I know that every time I hit a goal, it's in the reflecting of the journey that speaks volumes to me. And I would go back and redo this whole journey for, for no paycheck, just for what it's done in my life, just for what it's taught me. It's been hard. It's nitty gritty. It's simple, but it's hard, right? You push yourself further than you ever thought you could, just like hiking a mountain where you hit these moments where you're like, there's no way I can continue. I can't get up the mountain. I can't continue. But that journey is so worth it. But look at the valley. Now, where we lived when I was in high school was up on a hilltop. And I remember hearing these other high school students talking about the valley. That's where the farmers lived. Like they almost had an air about them that they didn't live in the valley. The farms were in the valley, as you can see here. Beautiful tulip farms. If you want fresh flowers, they were in the valley. If you want to go to the fruit stand, the vegetable stand, all the pumpkin patches, it was all in the valley. That's where the richest soil was found. That's where the farmers were. That's where the hard work is. That's where the tilling of the soil is. That's where the consistency day in and day out. Like, do you know any harder workers than farmers? I don't. Like, I think they're ridiculously amazing. (laughs) What goes into farming and how early they get up and how diligent they have to be to sustain what they're doing. Is that not right? But I want you to think for a moment of even the valley seasons you've walked through in life or in your business, because we have the raw, raw, and we have the excitement of several people who accomplished their goals last month, but I know there are some that didn't. I know there are some that set out with expectations for April and you didn't reach those goals. And if I could help put on a new set of lenses and bring you all, all the way to a place where you can be just as excited about your valley seasons as you are your mountaintops, then I feel like I've, I've done a good job. Like that, that's what I'm striving to get to. It's the necessary shift that I needed in my own life. What I walk through with Judah, it's not a mountaintop. The mountaintop moments with Judah are these glimpses, the moment that he sings. I'll get teary-eyed. It's when he's happy. And so you celebrate those because the other times it's a valley. It's 10 years that have been very hard. And so I had to learn to embrace the valley, to recognize the fruit, to celebrate it because I don't live on a mountaintop. None of us do. Your trial looks different than mine. But we can get to a place where if we're not hitting our goals, we can be like, oh, okay, what's my fruit? What am I growing in this fertile soil? What is in my heart that needs to be tilled up from the ground? What do I need to do right now in this season? Throw in the chat for me, if you will, and participate with me. What is the fruit of your valley? What are you able to focus on when you're in a valley season in life? or in your business. Oh, I love you too. But you gotta throw some fruit in the chat. (laughs) Believe overcoming negative mindsets. 
Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord, patience, growth. Yes. Pray. More specifically, mm -hmm. <clears throat> faith, the faith walk, patience and humility. Yes. Timeline of God, right? See an eternal perspective. Oh, I did not mean to go back. How did I even do that? Okay, we're good. All right, these are what I wrote down, similar to yours. Perseverance, grit, like a farmer. I picture grit and hard work and sweat. Joy, despite your circumstances. Tilling the soil of your heart. And being determined to find out what lies there, I think the valley can bring up some layers to your soil that you don't love. Anger, frustration, bitterness or resentment, comparison and jealousy. There's things that start to surface in the soil. Uh, just like, have you ever had to help your parents in the yard? We did and you had to get rocks out of the yard. A horrible job. I don't know why we had to do that, but we had to take rocks out of the dirt. <laughs> That's not fun, but we all have junk in our soil that we need to bring up to the surface and remove. Um, it's a time of developing your character and your longevity, your work ethic and determining, do you even have one, right? Consistency in all seasons, tap rooting, you're in the trenches. I feel like the valley is really where we spend the most time. And so if we're not careful, we don't have the right lenses on, who are we becoming then? Are we becoming resentful and miserable because in our mind, we think life should be in the mountaintops? Or can we get to where we recognize that's not where a sustainable life is. Most of, my, most of my life will be spent in the valley and in the journey. And can we walk that out with wonder and with curiosity and with gratefulness and expectancy and like bearing good fruit from our time there? If we don't, I wrote this down, if we don't view it properly, we're going to get stuck. I feel like we'll stay there longer like the Israelites did, and we can become bitter. But here's another thing. If you're in the valley, sometimes it's going to be up to you when you're going to decide to put your boots back on and take another hike up the mountain. I feel like there's times that you're waiting on the Lord and you're like, Lord, I just trust you to show me when it's time, when it's time to run, you're going to breathe that, that fresh wind, you know, and I'm waiting on your timing and I trust you in this process. And you're just leaning on like what you need to be learning. Right. But there's times where he's like, can you put your darn boots on and go take a hike with me? It's time to go back up the mountain and you've got to be prepared for the work that that takes to now start making your way all the way, just like Taylor did all the stinking way. I don't know how you go to bed at 8.30. That's so impressive. But it's also so impressive that you busted your way through and you, you saw it through to the end. And it was exhilarating to watch. My family was in bed and I was sitting downstairs in the darkness watching all this take place. It was just the best thing ever. You know how scripture says we go from glory to glory. The way I picture it is you've got mountaintop, valley to mountaintop, to valley, to mountaintop. And as I was thinking about that tonight, here's the picture that I saw. <sighs> if I could figure out how to show you. Not that, this. It's our heartbeat. Our heartbeat does the very same thing. And I feel like it's the heart of God for us too. I just want to embrace it better. I'm still in it with you guys. I don't like valley seasons, transition seasons, seasons that are hard and nitty gritty. I like the easy days. I like the happy days, the highlight moments, the mountaintop moments, like they're my favorite. <laughs> but I think it's the heart of God for us. Just like we talk about so often, he cares far more about the condition of our heart that really is produced in the valley, in the soil of our heart. He cares far more about that than the condition of our business right? And as leaders, we care more about that and for our people is how is our heart doing? How's their character doing? I got to stop this share so I can see your faces again. More about our hearts than anything else. I will champion you towards a healthy heart and a healthy home over anything in your business. I'm excited to rah-rah through all your accomplishments in your business. 
but more than that, the condition of your heart to know how to navigate seasons of life. If I can take what I've walked through and what I've had to learn in my hard times and in my valleys seasons, not just in business, but in the trials we've walked through in life, if you can have those tools way earlier than I did and be equipped to navigate them with the right lenses and be like, oh my goodness, like what if, could we get to be a team that is so excited about our valley seasons, just as excited as our mountaintop moments? Imagine what life would be like if we're like, hey, it's another valley. What do we get to learn? Like even something we were walking through recently with one of our kids, I remember feeling like bound and determined when I get through this, I'm going to be so much better. Like, and I was imagining like, what could I look like if I can get through this season unoffended? What will I be like? What kind of maturity could I have in Christ? How can I look more like him because of this trial? You have to choose though, to flip the lens that you see your life through. And I have to choose it daily right along with you. I promise this man can vouch for it because sometimes I still have an attitude and I got to fix it, but the Lord's so good to remind us. I think that's all I have. It is all I have. That's it. That's the end of my notes. And now there's like no words left. <laughs> I just hit the end and then I have no segue. There's no transition. It's not smooth or graceful. I'm going to pass it to Chad. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Morgan, we need a we need Sarah in here to be the trans transition master, you know. Just yeah. We have a friend that's like she this is her lane. Yeah. So can you get her started so she can transition on the zooms? Sure. All right, Morgan, go ahead and get her started. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's so good to see all you guys tonight. One of the things that like just made my heart so happy is like seeing Carrie and your daughter there and I think it was Vicky. You had uh, one of your children, or maybe two. I don't know. They're climbing all over you. <laughs> Stephanie, you had one that was. Well, she had two there two crawling all over the place. Taking over the camera. Levi, where's your, where's your, where's Judah? Sleeping. They got the monitor there. Come on. Hey, Judah. Good morning. Oh, God. <laughs> We're gonna wake you up, Judah. <laughs> oh, that's the best. <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened here on a Zoom. That was pretty special. Anyways, and there's Jeremiah. He's going to, <laughs> Jeremiah's got a special word for us. Let's go. Come on, Jeremiah, share. I no. it. He's got nothing. <laughs> He's got nothing. Just a, just a big smile. Anyways, we're going to pray. All right. So some of you guys, um, this is the first time you guys have been here on Zoom, at least that I've seen, and just want to kind of let you know what you're walking yourself into. Is that, <laughs> is that you, Rebecca? Is that your first Zoom? Your uh, hey, hey girl. So just so you know, you didn't enter church, but you did enter a lot of people that love Jesus. <laughs> so this is uh, what we call marketplace ministry. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the beauty of what we're doing is that we really believe that God's got a place for each and every one of us, whether you're you just hit your first, you know, five, six points or whether you're um, a diamond ambassador is that the Lord is using each and every one of you, like Chris said, in this marketplace ministry, it's just amazing. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how we roll. If you don't like it, Chris is like, <laughs> I'm not going to, you thought I was going to say something mean. <laughs> she, already I, I, I wasn't going to say something. Mean. We all love it. I know. I'm so, so you nervous like by it, you. You'll love it as you continue to come back <laughs> over and over again. Right, Jenna? Right, Jenna? <laughs> All right, we're going to pray. <laughs> so close out in prayer. Father God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for just your presence here. Thank you for the awesome testimony of Isaac and Taylor and what they did this month and we just rejoice with them and just see your hand all over that. And it's small little miracles like that, that it's just so easy to acknowledge you and just to see that isn't it just like you to bring, bring us to the last few minutes and then show up when we have nothing left in the tank and there's nothing more that we can do, but you say, I'll, I'll push you over. And so we just ask you, Lord, that there'll be more and more testimonies like these. They increase our faith like crazy. They get us motivated. And we just want you to be shining in, in these moments, just like Isaac and Taylor. So we just thank you for that. And I just thank you, Father God, for just clear direction. And I just 
even since tonight as I was, I was praying that maybe some of you, your belief might not be as where it once was or where it could be. And I just felt like the Lord inviting you into dream again. And whether it was an extra $500, $5,000, or what if you're making a six-figure in income through Plexus? What would that look like for your family? And I just feel like the Lord's inviting you in. I know, um, you know, you see all the stuff posted online about Plexus income and Diamond. And I just want to encourage you that's true. Like every bit of it is true that you can, you can make as much as you want here. We've been doing it for many years and it's allowed us to go into full-time ministry and just have the family and, and life, time and money, the flexibility. And I, I just feel like the Lord's noticing on some of your hearts tonight that, man, you, you want that. You want that time with your family. You want the time with your kids. You want that time with your husband. You want to have something that's going to make a lasting impact. Impact. You want something that's going to outlast yourself. And I just hear the Lord say, I'm inviting you into that dream again. So I'd encourage you even tonight, like, what would it look like if you were making $10,000 a month in this business? Just take a moment, just write it down. And you're working whatever, 10, 20 hours a week, and you have the rest of the time to be with your family and live a life. Where would you sow that money into? What would you do with it? Maybe even throw something in the chat right now as we're praying, just it's okay to like interrupt yourself in prayers like I do all the time. It's just <laughs> totally, God's really okay with it. And um, I did want to pray over one person tonight that just really was highlighted. Vicki Rye, I haven't met you before, Vicki, but the Spirit of the Lord is all over you tonight. And I just, um, we haven't met, but I'm just going to pray. I don't even know what for, but Father God, I just thank you for Vicki. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life. And I just uh, even hear the Lord saying to you tonight, you can trust again, Vicki, that if there is any type of broken promises or trust that you have experienced in your life, I feel like the Lord is inviting you back into having a, a full-blown trust with him. So I thank you, Father God, for her heart. I thank you for her yes. I thank you for, for the healing that she is going through and, and has gone through. And I thank you, Father God, for catapulting her into a new season. And I just see a bunch of like, uh, when you have like the mama chicken and all the little chickadees, I think, I feel like the Lord is opening up your eyes to a bunch of chickadees, little, little ones that he wants to bring into your, your nest. So I thank you, Father God, for that. And thank you, Lord, for Vicki. And I just ask you, Lord, that she would draw closer to you. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one here that you give them the opportunity to see things, pictures and words and numbers, and your voice is clear. Sometimes it's whispers. Sometimes it's a loud picture. Sometimes it's a sign. Sometimes you speak through our children, but you speak and you speak and you speak over and over and over again. I love what my friend Jeremiah said and jumped on here is that if you read the Bible today, You've heard it from the voice of the Lord. That's really as clear as we can get. We don't always need an audible voice or it can just be reading another scripture. So we thank you, Lord, that you personalize scripture for us. We thank you, Lord, for Team Revive. We love this team. We're so thankful that we get an opportunity to be a part of their journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a night. Love you guys. Thank you again, Morgan and Taylor and Zandra. That was amazing. And we can't wait to see y'all soon. Good night.